Okay, and welcome to another uh, quick session, which is just going to dig into a little bit more detail around some of the more advanced features that are available that come as part of the ArcSight Enterprise Security Manager, or ESM, uh, correlation uh, platform. So uh, now I'm actually going to talk about what I call a threat level formula or a calculation that's done with regards to the priority of the events and, and what's actually going on. So at the moment, we're just looking at a just a very simple list of uh, events. Uh, I'm not differentiating here. I'm just showing that there's all sorts of things here from all sorts of log sources. Uh, we can see that it's a, a real big mixture of uh, log sources here, which is really useful to see, but it's not really useful to, for me to use because, of course, the question then is, what's important? What do I need to deal with? What What is the process that I need to go through to investigate and triage what's actually occurring? So, of course, I can see some high priorities and I can see some low priorities, which is important. Well, the system's actually helping and guiding you as part of that. The priority is the thing that's giving me the understanding. Here, I'm not doing any prioritization on that one. But of course, what's actually occurring in the background? Like I say, it's this threat level formula that's occurring. And that's what's helping guiding me to the most uh, high priority things. And that's where I put my effort. So you know, if I was going to do an investigation, I'd start with the high priority things and go from there. What is it actually doing? So let me take an example here. So this is just very quickly filtered on the, uh, this is a check off firewall one logs. Uh, and we can see there's a whole mixture of uh, source and destinations here. Uh, and we can see that they're of different priorities. So in general, the firewall logs come in as a priority three, but these come in as a priority five. Why is that? Why why is this why is this different? In fact, if I just double click on that, we can see that it's a firewall, we see the categorization and so on. If I scroll down here, I can see that my threat level calculation that's going on here, it's an, it's taking into account additional data here. So it's deriving that priority based on the other information here. So we can see that the, we are confident about the data because it's come from the log source. We are confident about its severity and, and in this particular case the asset criticality is high. So it's automatically increasing that number four. Us. In fact, actually, what's actually occurring is that we're tracking a number of things. So we're seeing other activity that's going on, say, for example, from one of these IP addresses, and we're understanding what that means, and we're tracking that on what we call active lists. So we can actually see, so if I look at that uh, .148, uh, if I look at uh, my ho hostile list for a second, uh, I, I'm not seeing anything necessarily on that one, but if I look at my what I consider to be a compromised source or, or a server in this case, I can actually see it's on that uh, on that list as well. So again, as part of the threat calculation, to derive that priority, it's understanding that we have actually seen evidence to indicate that this is a compromised server, and we're seeing some traffic to that. Therefore, it's going to be a higher priority for us to investigate, and that will impact other things that are occurring. If I go back and see that 119 address here, I get a look at the hostile list here. Oh, oh, look, there we go. There's the 119 there. So we can see that this is a source that's hostile. Talking to what we consider to be a compromised server, it automatically increases the priority for us automatically. More importantly, this, this is not correlation. This is just a calculation to derive what that priority is. That priority would then be taken into any correlation and then increased accordingly. So you'll have very low priority correlations because it's not that important. You'll have very high priority correlations because it's taking into account all the other aspects that are occurring. Is it a, a source or a destination that's been involved in something else? Is it a critical asset and so on? So it will be taking that data into account. That's one scenario. If I look at another little scenario here, for example, uh, this is uh, just some very simple, uh, if I just double click on this one, we can see this being picked up an IDS uh, system. It's a teardrop attack. It's a very old form of attack. But uh, again, you can see that there's two different numbers for the priority, a priority seven and a priority eight. What's actually occurring here is the time and the frequency. This has actually occurred a couple of times. Uh, and it, it, to occur once, you get a score of seven. To for it to occur a second time because of the type of attack based on the type of the information that maps to the context of what it is means that we automatically increase the priority of what that means because it's to happen once would be dangerous to happen multiple times you increase the priority 
So you can start to see that there is a number of aspects that are contributing together to give us that derived priority number to understand what is actually occurring. We're letting the system guide us to what's important, not having to write all this ourselves. We don't have to create these uh, the, these rules or these processes or this mechanism to score this. It's actually built in. I'm going to take one final uh, example here. If I just jump to my RDS IPS events here. In fact, there's a whole there's a whole bunch load of events that have occurred, which is all great and useful, and some are very low priority and some are not, not very high priority. But these ones are a very high priority. In fact, 10 is the highest you can get. So this indicates that this is a very high fidelity, that there's something very specific has gone on. So again, if I just dig into one of these uh, one of these particular events for a second, uh, and I just double click on that, and I can see the event. Again, this is not a correlation. This is not something that's been a sequence of things. This is one event based on the what other events have occurred in the past. So we can see that this is an exploit uh, of against uh, just being picked up by an IDS system. Again, I scroll down, I can see my overall confidence is high, the relevance is high, the criticality, the assets involved is high. Therefore, the overall derived priority is extremely high as well. What's important here is if I actually um, take a look at this information, this particular Web IIS IDC attempt corresponds to this particular vulnerability. We do that contextual mapping automatically, so we'll understand what that actually means. That particular event from that particular type of IDS IPS system means that particular vulnerability. When we actually look down and look at our attacker and destination, our source and destination here, we can see it's come from this particular spyco.com uh, address, and it's talking to this particular internal asset we have here. Importantly, it's also talking to a particular asset we have defined. And if actually, if I just double click on the on the actual asset, it takes me through to the the actual asset, and we can see that hey presto, that actually maps. If I scroll up here, uh, zero zero eight seven four maps to the actual vulnerability that this particular asset has as well. So we've managed to pull in some asset information. We've managed to pull in some vulnerability data that we've had scanned. We've seen some uh, IDS IPS events that correspond. We've understood the context. We've done the mapping to understand that the vulnerabilities are the same. And we've scored automatically the priority to reflect that. So suddenly, not necessarily even through correlation here, we are dynamically helping the administrators and the analysts understand what's high priority and understand where they need to be focusing their attempts. So suddenly we're doing that. In fact, actually, if I go a step further, uh, I can actually look up that vulnerability and I can even, if I wanted to, to go for a little bit further and say, tell me what other assets in my infrastructure have got that vulnerability. So which other assets are going to be impacted by this current attack that I'm seeing? I can see the one that I'm already looking at here, but I can also see there's a second one. So now I can start doing an investigation here. Suddenly, it's incredibly powerful to be able to have that data at hand simply and easily so I can view that data, understand, and have the system guide me as an analyst to ensure that I look at the most and the highest risk and threat events as they occur, not necessarily even through priority uh, and, and through correlate, correlation. We can actually do so by having that dynamically affected. How does it actually do this? Well, interestingly, it is actually a very simple system. There's some quite clever uh, parts to it. It's a derived calculation. We understand the context and the vulnerabilities, but we actually understand what it means as well. So we'll score that priority for us. So it is actually as part of an XML file. So uh, for ESM users, you can actually see this. It's actually in that particular folder. So it's in the manager conf server folder, and you'll, you'll actually see that it's this uh, threat level formula.xml. Um, so in fact, actually, I can just threat level for me dot xml uh, the reason why I use gedit it actually does all the color coding so it makes it a little bit easier to see I'm not going to go through in detail but we can see that it's actually nicely documented it goes through as if it has an asset ID and it has a vulnerability it'll look it up um, if it's uh, particular ports that are relevant uh, if it's an already scanned asset uh, if it's on a, one of these lists that we've tracked before so the standard content will update that for us and we'll track that and increase the priority if we consider it to be hostile uh, and then we'll score all the assets 
assets are rate based on criticality. So if you've scored these assets as high, medium or low uh, criticality, it will automatically increase or decrease that priority for us as well. And we give you the overall calculation there. Uh, that's just in the actual XML file as well. There is a PDF file that goes and explains all that and explains what it means and what the impact is uh, and how we increase those numbers accordingly uh, and how that reflects as well. So you can actually see that uh, as part of the documentation as well. Um, but that's how we're doing that formula scoring. That's what we're doing. We're doing that on every single event, every single time to understand what the true priority is for the underlying base event and how that maps to asset criticality, the severity, the actual impact of it, as well as any vulnerability data. And we're doing that on everything. So actually, yes, it's incredibly powerful and it guides me as an analyst to use this system. So I hope that gives a very, very quick overview. I, I encourage anybody to, uh, customer to have a look at that threat level formula and dig into that and try and understand that and how we use those lists and how we use that vulnerability data to aid you into prioritization numbering. Uh, thank you very much.